Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alamtana. Continuing with Zad al-Mustaqna, the chapter pertaining to the rights of Hajj and Umrah. We stopped last week speaking about the prohibitions of the Hiram. We finished most of them and we stopped with the author, may Allah have mercy upon him, he said the following. When jama'a qabla tahallil al-awwal fasada nusukuhuma That if, the, if there's a couple who are in ihram and they have marital relationships between the, before the first tahallil then their rights of hajj will become invalid and spoilt. So what is the first tahallil? Tahallil al-awwal This tahallil al-awwal is achieved by pelting the large pillar jamrat al-aqaba and the shaving of the head. So if the relationship takes place before this, then the rights of Hajj become void. But they have to continue in completing the rights of the Hajj and the Umrah. And they have to make it up in the following year. Sheikh Mansour, he says in his explanation, the following. From the forbidden things upon the muhrim, the person in the state of ihram, is to have marital relationships, full physical marital relationships. What the leel and the evidence for this is Qawlu Ta'ala, the statement of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, where he says, فَمَنْ فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجَّ فَلَا رَفَثَ وَلَا فُسُوقَ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجَّ That whoever has uh, embarked upon the hajj, then he shouldn't make rafath. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, he said, Arrafath huwa jima That Rafath is jima having the marital, the full marital relationships, as mentioned by Imam Ibn Kathir. And also we have the ijma of the ummah. Sheikh Mansur says there is ijma consensus upon this issue. Mun'aqadun ala an al-muhrim mamnu'an min al That the muhrim, the one in the state of ihram, is forbidden to have the full marital relationships. Aw ash- wa huwa ashaddu al-mahdhurat. And it is the most severe of the things which are forbidden upon the muhrim, upon the person in the state of ihram. Wadabitul jama' and the determining rule of what is jama' or the, what defines jama' what defines marital relationship here is taghibul hashafa fi farj asliyin fi farjin asliyin is that the private part enters into the opposite gender's private part. Qublun aw dubrun min adamiyin The front or the back private parts of the human being aw ghayrihi or other than the human being Sheikh Mansour says فَإِذَا وَقَعَ الْجِمَاء قَبْلَ تَحَلِّلِ الْأَوَّلِ تَرَتَّبَ عَلَيْهِ أُمُورِ So if the jima, the marital relationship takes place before the first tahallul then certain factors come into play The first of them فَسَادُ nusuk that the nusik, that the rights of hajj become void and invalid. لِأَنَّهُ وَارِدْ عَنِ sahaba Because this is what is reported from some of the sahaba. كَعُمَرْ وَعَلِي وَأَبِي هُرَيْرَ وَإِبْنِ عُمَرْ وَإِبْنِ عَبَاسِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ So all of these companions and other than them, they mentioned the fatwa, that the one who has the marital relationship before the first tahallul, then the hajj for this person becomes invalid. Second factor to consider, الْمُضِيُّ فِيهِ that the person who does this, they have to continue in completing the rights of the Hajj, even though their Hajj is going to be invalid. Because many of the companions radiallahu anhum, they gave this fatwa that the Hajj will become invalid, yet though it's invalid, they have to continue in completing the Hajj, and then they have to make it up in the following year. And the third factor, wujub al qada min al amal qadim, as we just mentioned, that the hajj has to be made up in the following year. Wahada bi ijma'il ulama, and this is by the consensus of the ulama. Naqalahu ibn Mundir. This was reported by Ibn Mundir, this consensus. Sheikh Mansur he says, bin nisbati lil umrati hal tufsad bil jima'. With regards to umrah, does the same ruling apply? Meaning that if somebody has jima'. Has marital relationship in Umrah, does this also nullify the rights of Umrah? He says, In Kana al Jima Qabla Sa'i Fasadat. If the Jima, if the relationship takes place before the Sa'i, before the going between Safa and Marwa, then the Umrah becomes invalid. 
وَإِنْ كَانَ بَعْدَهُ لَمْ تُفْسَدْ But if it's after the sa'i uh, of going between Safa and Marwa, then the Umrah is not invalidated. نَصَّ عَلَيْهِ أَحْمَدْ Imam Ahmad mentioned this specifically. وَعَلَيْهِ شَاتٌ But the person has to pay a penalty of a shat, of a goat or of a lamb. كَمَا سَيَأْتِي As this will come in further explanation, when we come to the area of discussing what are the penalties for violating the ihram. The author, may Allah have mercy upon him, Imam al-Hajjawi, he says, وَتَحْرُمُوا الْمُبَاشْرَةُ And al-mubashra is also forbidden. مِنَ الْمَحْذُورَاتِ From the forbidden things, al-mubashratu li shahwatin fi ma dun al-farj is to have physical relationship with your spouse but less than the full marital relationship. So anything from kissing or caressing or anything beyond that, but not full uh, intercourse, then this is also something which is forbidden. والمراد, and the intent, المباشرة الرجل للمرأتي, is that the man has uh, erotic desire with his wife. لأنه وسيلة إلى الوطء المحرم, because this is a thing that will lead to the forbidden marital relationship so if the person is kissing or caressing in a in a desirous way this will lead to um, the marital relationship which is forbidden upon the muhrim and the evidence for the forbiddance of this that which came from the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the verse that we previously mentioned فلا رفث, and there should be no rafath وَقَوْلُ ابْنِ عباس and ابن عباس he said هو الجماع that this is marital relationships ونقل ابن هبيرة اتفاق الألماء and Imam ابن هبيرة he brought about the consensus that the علماء they said أنه لا يجوز للمحرم أن يجامع في الفرج that it's not permissible for the محرم to have full marital relationships ولا دون الفرج and also not to have sexual relationships which are less than that. وَلَا يُقَبِّلْ And not to be kissing. وَلَا يَلْمَسْ بِشَهْوَةً And neither that they can uh, touch each other with desire. Imam al-Hijawi, may Allah have mercy upon him, he says, فَإِنْ فَعَلَا فَأَنْزَلَ لَمْ يَفْصُدْ حَجُّهُ وَعَلَيْهِ بَدَنَا However, if the person does this, and yeah, this mubashara, this, um, yani, desirous and erotic uh, interaction and the person ejaculates then this doesn't spoil the Hajj but he has to pay the penalty of a badna he has to pay the penalty of a, of a camel so Sheikh Mansur he says in Bashar al-Muharim wa anzila if the Muharim has this uh, touching and he ejaculates فَإِنَّ حَجْهُ لَا يُفْسَدْ then his Hajj is not going to be invalid وَذَلِكَ and that is because لِعَدْمُ وَجُودِ النَّصْ عَلَى فَسَادِهِ Because there is no uh, textual evidence which shows that the Hajj will become invalid. وَلَكِنْ عَلَيْهِ فِدْيَةً But upon him is a fidya, upon him is a penalty. وَهِيَ بَدْنَةً And it is to pay in fidya a camel. وَرَدَ هَذَا أَنْ بَعْضُ الصَّلَفِ مِنْهُمْ And this came from some of the statements of the Salaf from them. الحسن وعطاء حيث قال في رجل يلمس امرأته Whereupon Hassan and Ata they said pertaining to a man who touches his woman uh, desirously فينزل, and then he ejaculates عليه بدنة والحج من قابل that this person has to pay a بدنة has to pay a camel and he has to make Hajj in the following year and this author of this statement is found in the Musannaf of Imam Abdul Razak وسيأتي الإشارة إلى هذا في باب الفدية and more of this will be mentioned and it will be alluded to more in the chapter painting to the penalties, painting to the fidya. Uh, Sheikh Amir Bahjat, he mentions, Hafizahullah, if the mubashara takes place, if the erotic touching takes place, but there's no inzal, but there's no ejaculation, then they still have to pay fidya, but it's not like a badna, it's not the badna. They have to pay uh, fidya to al which is shirt. They have to uh, sac have a goat or a sheep sacrificed. So if the mubashla takes place, but there's no inzal, there's no ejaculation, then a fidya still has to be paid, but it's much less, and it's either a goat or a sheep. The author, he says, لَكِنْ يَحْرُمُ مِنَ الْحِلْ لِلطَّوَافِ الْفَرْضِ However, the person has to go back to the hill, the area of the hill where you can put on the ihram, which is tan'im, for example, Masjid Aisha, uh, to be in order to do the tawaf al fard to do the tawaf al hajj uh, whilst being in the state of ihram. 
So Sheikh Mansour, he says, هذه الإبارة تابعة للمسألة السابقة That this phrase that the author has put here, it's going back to the previous مسألة, to the previous issue which was talking about if a person has marital relationships with his wife before the تحلل الأول, before the first تحلل. Okay? And also Sheikh Uthaymeen and others have mentioned that our author, may Allah have mercy upon him, uh, Imam al-Hajawi, this must have been a slip of the mind, a slip of the pen, a mistake in his thinking because he put this mas'ala in the wrong place. This one, mas'ala that we're talking about, it should have been after the one speaking about the person having marital relationships before the tahallul al-awwal. Anyway, Sheikh Mansour, he said, هذه الإبارة تتابعة للمسألة السابقة This is to do with the previous مسألة والمعنى and its meaning is أنه إذا جام بعد تحلل الأول فإنه لا يفسد حجه If this person has um, marital relationship after the first uh, تحلل then this doesn't spoil his حج لكنه لكن يحرم من الحل However he has to go and make that حرام from the حل from تنعيم المسجد عائشة and other places ليطوف الفرد so that the طواف الإفاضة can be made وذلك لأنه قد فسد إحرامه and that is because he had invalidated and spoiled his إحرام so if the person does fall into this situation then he has to go and he has to make uh, the hill he has to make the إحرام again from the hill the author he says وإحرام المرأة كالرجل إلا في اللباس that the woman's إحرام the woman's إحرام is like the man's in the terms of what is uh, not allowed upon her except in the situation of clothing Sheikh Mansour he says ما سبق من الأمور الحرام ومحذوراته فالمرأة فيها كرجل that which has previously been mentioned from the محذورات from the prohibitions of the حرام then the woman is similar to this in the man إلا في, الم... إلا في مسألة اللباس except in the issue of clothing فإنها ليست ممنوعة من لبس المخيط because verily she is not forbidden from wearing lubs al makhit from wearing the makhit and as we mentioned before makhit is that clothing which is fitted over your body it's fitted to uh, as normal clothing which uh, covers the shape of your body bal laha an talbas ma sha'at min al-thiyab rather she can wear whatever she wants to from clothing wa laysa hunakum thiyabun mu'ayyanatun lil-ihram and there's not any clothing which is specific for her to wear in the ihram لكن لا تلبس ما فيه تبرج وزينة however she's not to wear she's not allowed to wear and shouldn't wear that which is a, a clothing which is alluring and overly beautified she should wear simple clothing not to draw the attention of foreign men the author he says وتجتنب البرقة and she's to avoid the برقة the برقة is like a mask type of thing which is worn over the face والقفاء زين and she's also to avoid uh, gloves and to avoid covering her face. So Sheikh Mansour he says, الْمَرْأَةُ الْمُحْرِمَةُ فِيمَا يَتَّعَلَّقُ بِالْلِبَاسِ الْإِحْرَامِ مَمْنُوعَةٌ مِنْ أَشَاءَ That the woman pertaining to her ihram and her clothing, she is forbidden from certain things which are as follows. Number one, the burqa وَمِثْلُهُ النقاب. The first of them is the burqa and it's a face type of covering and it's similar and similar to this burqa is the niqab which is well known secondly a qufazain qufazain gloves which are worn to cover the hands and the evidences for, for these prohibitions is found in bukhari where ibn umar radiyallahu anhum said that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said la tatnaqab al that the muhrima the female the, the woman in ihram she shouldn't wear the niqab wala talbas al qufazain nor should she wear gloves Sheikh Mansour says, وَلَكِنْ تَحْرُسْ عَلَى تَغْطِيَةِ يَدَيْهَا However, she should be eager and she should be careful to cover her hands. إِمَّا بِثَوْبِهَا Either with her thobe, the long sleeves that she has on the thobe, أو أَبَاءَتِهَا أو her abaya in the الْأَجَانِبِ And this is done when there are foreign men who are uh, not from her mahrams around her, which is very likely to be the case in Hajj and Umrah. أما شيء خاص باليد فلا. As for having something particular and specific to cover the hands, like gloves, then she's not allowed to do so. أما قدماها فلا بأس أن تلبس عليهما جوارب وخفافا تسترهما بها. Pertaining to her feet, then there's no harm in her wearing socks and similar to that to cover her feet. تغطية وجهها. 
تَغْطِيَةُ وَجْهَهَا Pertaining to covering her face. وَهَذَا إِذَا لَمْ تَكُنْ بِحَضْرَةِ أَجَانِبِ then she's not allowed to cover her face as long as she is not in the company of uh, non-mahram men. However, if she was in the company of non-mahram men, then in this situation, Sheikh Mansour says that it's imperative and obligatory upon her that she covers her face. And Sheikh Mutlaq Jasr, he said that it can be covered with cloth from the head but it can't be covered with something which is tied around the head. Okay, so if there's some type of cloth like a shawl which is around the head that can be brought down to cover her face when she is in the presence of non-mahram men. Uh, Imam al-Hajjawi he says, وَيُبَاحُ لَهَا التحلي. And it's permitted for her to have jewelry, to wear jewelry in the state of ihram. She doesn't have to avoid jewelry. Shaykh Mansour he says, يُبَاحَ لَهَا أَن تَلْبَسَ الحلي. It's permitted for her to wear jewelry. And there's no dislike in doing so. However, when around non mahram men, she should hide this jewelry from their vision. And the reasoning, the reasoning for her allowed to be, uh, for her allowed to wear jewelry is that the rulings remain upon the asl, upon the original rulings which is that the woman she can wear jewelry فليس فما ما يدل على من المحرمه من المحرمه من الحلي so there is not evidence to show that the muhrima man al muhrimati that the muhrima is not prevented from is is prevented from wearing jewelry so there's no evidence sheikh mansour is saying to give a fatwa that the woman she cannot wear um, jewelry in the state of Ihram and in fact the permissibility for her to wear jewelry has been narrated to us from a group of the Salaf منهم Ibrahim al Nakhai. from them the great Imam of the Tabi'een Ibrahim al Nakhai, Wal Aswad Wal Al Qama وسئل سعيد ibn Jubair and Imam Sa'id ibn Jubair from the Tabi'een was asked an Al Huli Wal Harir pertaining to silk and pertaining to jewelry للمحرمتي تلبسه pertaining to the um, female in ihram can she wear it he said إن كان تلبسه وهي حلال فتلبسه وهي محرمة that if she used to wear it while she was out of the state of ihram then she can continue to wear it whilst in the state of ihram طيب with this the imam he has finished talking about the things which are محذور the things which are forbidden upon the محرم male or female okay now he's going to talk about Babul Fidya. Now he's going to explain the rulings pertaining to the penalties that are paid for anybody who violates the state of Ihram. The author he says, Babul Fidya, the chapter of penalties. Al Fidya to Lugatan. Fidya linguistically, Ma Yu'ta fi iftika kalasir, that which is given to ransom the prisoner, to free the prisoner. Wa nahwihi mimman yahtaju ila in qadihi bihi. And likewise, other than the prisoner, whom ransom is required for them to be freed. وَالْمُرَادُ بِهَا هُنَا And the intent of the word fidya here, مَا يَدْفَعُهُ مَنْ وَقَعَ فِي مَحْذُورٍ مِنْ مَحْذُورَاتِ الْإِحْرَامِ That what does the person pay from those people who fall into the forbidden items upon the muhrim, upon the person in the state of ihram. So that's what he's going to talk about. وَالْحِكْمَةُ مِنْهَا And the wisdom behind the fidya, Ta'adim Amrul Ihram is to show and to give honor and high status to the situation of being in, in Ihram. So these penalties are to show that one should be very careful about, about not falling into that which is forbidden in the state of Ihram. And this tasmiya, this uh, naming of the word fidya is taken from the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah فَفِدْيَةٌ مِّنْ صِيَامٍ أَوْ صَدَقَاتٍ أَوْ نُسُكٍ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when talking about penalties for the uh, violation of the ihram he mentions the word fidya وَقَدْ ذَكْرَ الْمُؤَلِفُ فِي هَذَا الْبَابِ أَقْصَامُ الْفِدْيَةِ وَمَا يَجِبُ فِيهَا And the author in this chapter Sheikh Mansour says he defines for us the, the different types of fidya that um, can take place, the different types of penalties that may arise. And who should the fidya be paid to? 
واعلم نو ان محظورات الاحرام بالنسبه للفديه لها اربعه اقسام نو ذات بيتينينج تو ذا محرم ذا محظورات ذا فوربيدن ايتمز فور ذا محرم فول انتو فور ديفرنت كاتيجوريز فور ديفرنت تايبس ذا فيرست اوف ذيم اولها ما فديته فديه اذى ذات ويتش از نون از ذا بينالتيز اوف اذى ذا بينالتيز اوف هارم فديه اذى وهي الحلق ان ات از تو شيف ذا هيد تو كات ذا هير وتقليم ان تو كات ذا نيلز وتغطيه الراس ان تغطيه الراس ان تو كفر ذا هيد والطيب ان تو بوت اون برفيوم ذيس از نون از فديه اذى اني ون اوف ذيس فور ماترز ار دان ذن ات ويل بي كونسيدرد فور ذا بينالتي ذن ذيس ويل بي كونسيدرد از ذا بينالتيز فور فديه اذى سكند اوف ذيم ما فديته الجزاء ذا بينالتي كاتيجوري اوف بينالتيز which is replacement or badluhu is replacement jaza is to um, pay its value or badluhu or to replace it wa huwa qatl sayd and this is relating to the animals which are hunted so those animals which are forbidden to be hunted whilst in a state of ihram then if this is done then there is going to be either replacement for the animal given or there is going to be money paid to the value of the animal thirdly ma fidiyatuhu mughalladatun that which fidya that penalty which is mughallada mughallada mean severe wa huwa al jima fi al hajj qabla tahallal al awwal and it is having intercourse in hajj before the first tahallal because this severe penalty means that the hajj becomes invalid that you have to pay a badana that you have to pay a camel that you have to continue with the hajj even though it's void and that you have to make it up from the previous year and you have to make tawbah from falling into a huge major sin The fourth of them, ما لا فدية فيه. The fourth of them is that which there is no fidya for doing. So this violation of the haram, there's no fidya for it. There's no penalty for it. وهو عقد نكاح. And it is um, making a marriage contract. And Sheikh Mutlaq Jasser, in his explanation, he brings to our um, attention the very important point, which is that when some people they break the or they fall into the penalties of ihram they break uh, and violate the state of ihram by doing something like they don't want to wear the izar and the rida they for example wear normal clothing saying it's not a problem i'll pay the fidya i'll pay the penalty he's saying no it shouldn't be taken like this the person has to understand that what he is doing is a major sin so wearing clothing wearing mukhit instead of the ihram clothing that you're supposed to be wearing the izar and the rida is like drinking alcohol in legislation meaning to say that you are committing a major sin you are going against you are falling into a major prohibition it's not a light matter which should be taken lightly the author he says that you khayru bi fidyati halq wa taqlim aw taqtiyati ras wa tib bayna that the person who falls into the violation of cutting his hair or clipping his nails or covering his hair or putting on perfume he has the choice between the following matters bayna siyam thalathati ayyam either he can fast three days أو إطعام ستة مساكين أو he has to feed six people لكل مسكين مد بر for each مسكين there is a handful of wheat أو نصف صاع تمر أو half a صاع half of this measurement half a صاع of تمر of dates أو شعير or of wheat or barley أو ذبح شاة أو you have to sacrifice a shat a goat or a sheep Sheikh Mansour he says القسم الأول the first category ما فديته فدية أذى that which penalty is known as the penalty of أذى the penalty of harm فدية أذى وهذه المحظورات هي and these forbidden items are الحلق cutting the hair وتقليم الأظافر and cutting the nails وتقطيع الرأس and cutting and uh, covering the hair والطيب and perfume these are known as فدية الأذى وفدية الأذى هي على تخير تخير بين أمور ثلاثة and فدية الأذى is between a choice of the following three matters the first of them إطعام ستة مساكين feeding six people ومقدار الإطعام and the amount of feeding that should be is مد بر is a handful of بر a handful of wheat أو نصف صاع من غير البر أو half a صاع of other than بر other than wheat كالتمر like dates and like sha'ir and like barley uh, the second thing which can be done as a choice of paying the penalty is siyam thalathati ayyam mutatabi'a is that to fast seven days in uh, consecutively sorry three days consecutively siyam thalathati ayyam to fast three days mutatabi'a consecutively aw mutafarriqa or 
not consecutively, meaning you can fast them one day, one day on, one day off if you wanted to do so. Because they came general and not specific in the Quran, meaning that the fasting was mentioned general and not specifically tied to anything in the Quran. Therefore, continuation of the fasting is not uh, a shart, is not a condition. Or thirdly, dhabhushat. The third choice of the penalty for this category of penalties, fidya to other, is that the person can sacrifice a sheep or a goat. If it's a sheep, it's a sheep that has to be six, year, six months old. If it's a goat, then it has to be the age of a year. Uh, we'll, we'll mention more about this uh, in the coming chapter. What the leel and the evidence of Bukhari and Muslim, Ka'b ibn Ujra, Ka'b ibn Ujra, he said, Anna Rasulullah sallam, that the Prophet sallam, marra bihi zaman al-Hudaybiyyah, that in the time of Hudaybiyyah, the treaty of Hudaybiyyah, the Prophet sallam, passed by Ka'b. فقال له, and he said to him, ذاك حوام رأسك, that the lice in your hair have have been harming you because his head was full of lice and nits and they were falling all over his face. قال نعم. So he said yes. فقال له النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said to him, احلق رأسك. Shave your head. ثم اذبح شاتا. ثم اذبح شاتا. نسكا. And then sacrifice a sheep. أو صم ثلاثة أيام. Or fast three days. أو أطعم ثلاثة آصع من تمر. Or feed three saw of tamar ala sitati masakin and distribute it between six poor people. So, in this hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, we find the hadith of Ka'b ibn Ujra that the Prophet وسلم, he gave him a choice for fiddatul adha. From the fiddatul adha is cutting the hair between the three things that we mentioned. So, this uh, is an evidence for what the author is saying. The author he continues and he says, Wabi jiza isaidin bayna. And with regards to the jaza of the Sayyid, that the penalty for hunting uh, an animal which shouldn't be hunted whilst in the state of ihram, he can do mithl, in can. He can replace the animal like for like if that is available. Or he can, mithl can also mean that he, if like for like is not available, he can replace it with something which is similar to it, similar to the animal. Or he can determine its value and pay that amount of money uh, in charity and what he does with that money يَشْتَرِي بِهَا طَعَامًا that he buys food according to that amount of money فَيُطْعِمُ كُلَّ مِسْكِينٍ مُدْ and he, then he divides it between as many poor people as he can each one of them having a mud of food a mud worth of food أَوْ يَصُومُ عَنْ كُلِّ مُدٍ يَوْمٍ or if he doesn't have the money for that he still works out the value of the animal and he fasts for each day he fasts a day for each sick, uh, for each poor person that he would have fed if he had the money. Sheikh Mansur he says al qism thani, the second type of fidya, the second type of penny to his ma fidya tuhu al jaza that which fidya is payment or badluhu or replacing wa huwa qatlu sayd and it is to kill an animal which shouldn't be killed or hunted. Wa afad al kalam al musannif an sayd al muhrim qisman and the um, the kalam the speech of the author benefits that the divisions of the Sayyid that the Muhrim is not supposed to uh, hunt is of two types. Number one, ma lahu mithl, that which has a like or that which has um, that which has a like now. Wal mumathalatu takunu fi surah. And the like of the animal which is killed is it has to be in its look, in its surah, in its appearance. Wal khilqa and in its body shape and size. أو بجامع بينهما or with both of them with both the appearance has to be similar or the body like has to be similar ولذا and due to this يقولون they you say the ulama say the sahaba said إن نعمة تماثل البدنة that the ostrich if it is killed or the بدنة the ostrich uh, if it is killed it has a similar animal to it which can be paid in its replacement which is the بدنة the camel فَإِذَا صَادَ المحرم, So if the muhrim hunts أو من كان في الحرم صيدا or whoever is in the sanctuary of the haram hunts مثليا خير بين أمور ثلاثة Then this 
person is given the three choices. What are the three choices for the one who has hunted a forbidden hunting? Number one, and yadbaha mithluhu, that he has to sacrifice an animal which is similar to the one that he hunted. And then he distributes the meat to the poor people of Mecca. Second thing that he can do, and yandu, that he looks and he determines. Kam yusawir al mithal. How much is the value of the animal, of the animal that I killed? And then he distributes uh, food pertaining to the value of the animal that he killed. يُفَرِّقُ عَلَى مسكين. He distributes this food upon the uh, masakin of the haram. لِكُلِّ مِسْكِينَ نِصْفُ صَعَى For every miskin, for every poor person, he will have the determination, the value of نِصْفُ صَعَى The amount of food, half a صَعَى Thirdly, what he can do, أَنْ يَسُومَ عَنْ إِطْعَامْ كُلُّ مِسْكِينَ يَوْمًا That for each poor person that he was going to feed, but he doesn't have the money to feed that poor person, then he can fast a day for each person that he was supposed to feed, based upon the value of the animal that he is trying to replace. And the evidence, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you give a fidya penalty from either fasting or from charity or from the nusuk or for sacrificing an animal. Ma la mithla lahu is the second uh, type of animal. So the first type of animal was that which has a, um, a similar similar to it. مَا لَا مِثْلَهُ That which is not that animal which is killed and it has no similar to it. وَإِلَيْهِ أَشَارَ الْمَاتٍ بِقَوْلِهِ And that which is and that is what the author is talking about now in his statement where he said وَبِمَا لَا مِثْلَ لَهُ بَيْنَ إِطْعَامٍ وَصِيَامٍ And that animal which doesn't have a mithl which says no similar to it then the person has the choice between feeding or fasting. So Sheikh Mansour says, إِذَا صَادَ الْمُحْرِمْ مَا لَا مِثْلَ لَهُ فَيُخَيْرُ بَيْنَ أَمْرَيْنِ That the person, if he hunts that animal, which has no similar to it, then he has the choice between two matters. The first of them, أَنْ يَنْظُرْ كَمْ قِيمَةُ صَيْدَ الْمَقْتُولِ To look into the value of the dead animal, of the killed animal. ثُمَّ يُخْرِجُ مَا يُقَابِلُهَا طَعَامًا And then he takes out with money, he buys uh, uh, to the extent of the value of the animal, food. يُفَرِّقُ عَلَى الْمَسَكِينَ And he just spreads this upon the poor people of the Haram. لِكُلِّ مِسْكِينَ نِصْفُ سَعَى For each, sick per, for each um, poor person, he would have نِصْفُ سَعَى worth of food. Secondly, أَوْ يَصُومُ عَنْ إِطْعَامِ كُلِّ مِسْكِينَ يَوْمِ Or he fasts uh, in terms of, he looks at how much food is bought with the value of the animal which is killed. And if with that food, for example, he can feed 30 people, then what he does, he has to make 30 fasts because he's unable to pay the value. So he looks into the monetary value and he says, I can't pay this, so I'm going to fast uh, for 30 people instead. And this is what Sheikh Mansur said, where he said, أو يسوم أن أطعام كل مسكين يوم That he fasts one day in replacement of feeding a poor person. So for each poor person, he fasts a day. مثاله, an example. الجرادو أو الصفور يقدر قيمته. The jarad, the locust, or the uh, the sparrow which is killed, its its value is estimated in terms of monetary value. ويخرجها طعاما. And then the person goes out and buys food according to the amounts of uh, money that he has. أو يصوم عن كل مسكين يوما. Or he fasts instead of doing that, instead of buying food, he fasts for each poor person a day. And pertaining to the rulings of the hunted animal, which shouldn't be hunted, and the killed animal, more of this will be mentioned in the following chapter, uh, pertaining to uh, the dead animals, the, the dead killed animals, hunted animals, which should not have been killed. The author, he says, Pertaining to the dam, the blood, the sacrifice of the mut'a, the hajj al-mutamatta' or the hajj al-qarin, the hajj al-qiran, فَيَجِبُ الْحَدِي Then this person has to give the sacrificial animal, the hadi. فَنْعَدِمَهُ فَصُيَامُ ثَلَاثِ أَيَّامِ But if he's unable to do so, then he has to fast three days. وَالْأَفْضَلُ كَوْنُ آخِرِهَا يَوْمَ عَرَفَ And the best is that the last of the days of fasting be the day of Arafah. 
وسبعة إذا رجع إلى أهله and seven days fasting if he returns to his family so the dam of muta the dam of the hajj al tamattu and the dam of qarin is known as dam al shukr Sheikh Mansour he says سبقت الإشارة إلى أن المتمتع والقارن عليهما حدي it's been previously mentioned that the uh, mutamatta and the qarin they have to make a they have to sacrifice the sacrificial animal the hadi lakin ida adim al hadi however if the hadi the sacrificial animal is not available or they don't have it for a variety of reasons either because number 1 sheikh mansour says imma alla yajid hadiyan fi fi suq maybe the sacrificial animal is not found in the marketplace there's no one selling them or أو بأن لا يجد ثمنه or it could be that the person is unable to pay the value of this sacrificial animal or أو يجد ثمنه لكن يحتاج إليه لأهم من ذلك or he has the money for the sacrificial animal but he needs that money for something which is more important than the animal itself for example he needs the money to return back to his home country because he lost another amount of money or another scenario أو يجده لكن يمتنع صاحبه عن بيعه. Or he has the money and he's found the animal, but the person doesn't want to sell the animal. أو يمتنع صاحبه من بيعه إلا بغلاء. Or the person who owns the animal doesn't want to sell it except with a very inflated price. So in these situations, the person is unable to pay the hadi to sacrifice the animal. So what does he do? فإن فإنه حينها يسوم ثلاثة أيام في الحج وسبعة إذا رجع إلى أهله. so in this situation he fasts three days in the Hajj as a replacement for the sacrificial animal and seven days when he returns to his family. and the evidence is the statement of Allah سبحانه وتعالى who says فمن تمتع بالأمرة إلى الحج so whoever does the Hajj التمتع فما استيسر من الحدي then he must give what is easy for him to give from a sacrificial animal. This is obligatory for him. فَمَنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ And the one who cannot find the sacrificial animal due to the reasons that we just mentioned. فَصُيَامُ ثُلَاتِ أَيَّامٍ فِي الْحَجِّ Then he must fast three days in the Hajj. وَسَبْعَةٍ إِذَا رَجَعْتُمْ and, and seven when you have returned. تِلْكَ عَشْرَةٌ كَامِلًا And these are ten in completion. Ten days of fasting in completion. Sheikh Mansour he says, وَصِيَامُهُ لِحَدِ الْأَيَّامِ لَهُ حَالَتَانِ And the fasting for these days has two scenarios, two situations. Number one, أَمَّا ثَلَاثَةُ الْأَيَّامِ As for the three days, فَلَهَا وَقْتُ الْإِسْتِحْبَابِ Then there is a recommended uh, time for this fasting and also وَقْتُ الْجَوَازِ And also an, an allowed time for this fasting. So the three days you can either fast it in the recommended the, uh, the time which is uh, mustahab or that which is jaiz, that which is jawaz, that which is permissible. So Sheikh Mansur he says, فَوَقْتُ jawaz, That which is permissible pertaining to these three days. مِنْ حِينَ الْإِحْرَامِ بِالْعُمْرَةِ From the time that you put on your ihram for umrah. وَوَقْتُ الْإِحْسْتِحْبَابِ So this was for the um, jawaz, وَقْتُ jawaz, That which is permissible. But the istihbab, that which is mustahab, is يوم السابع وثامن وتاسع is the seventh day of Hajj, the eighth day of Hajj, and the ninth day of Hajj. This is the days which are mustahab for doing these three fasts for the one who needs to do them. أما سبعة الأيام pertaining to the seven days which are left, what does he do? Sheikh Mansour says فيبدأ وقت صومها so its time starts من حين فراغه من أعمال الحج from the moment he has finished the rites of Hajj. وَلَوْ لَمْ يَرْجِعَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ Even if he hasn't returned to his family. إِدْ الْمَرَادْ بِالرَّجُوءِ فِي الْآيَةِ الْإِنْتِهَا مِنَ أَعْمَالِ الْحَجْ Because the intent from the verse that we quoted pertaining to this issue, which mentions fast these seven days upon returning to your family, the intent here is meaning that when you have finished your actions of hajj, that's what it means. وَالْإِسْتَحْبَابِ أَنْ يَجْعَلَهَا إِذَا رَجَعَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ and it's recommended the istihbab, the mustahab thing, is to do when you return to your family. The author he says, Al Hijawi, Rahmatullah alayhi, he says, Wal Muhsiru ida lam yajid hadyan, sama ashratan thumma hal. The Muhsir, if he cannot find the hadi, the sacrificial animal, then he fasts 10 days and then he's relieved from his ihram, thumma hal. Al Muhsir, 
Who is the muhsir? Sheikh Mansour explains. الذي لم يستطع دخول مكة بعد ما أحرم This is the one who has made the ihram at the miqat, but for whatever reason he's forbidden from entering into Mecca. بسبب عدو منعه Due to maybe for example an enemy has forbidden him from entering into Mecca. فإنه يذبح حديا ثم يحل For verily he goes then and he sacrifices his sacrificial animal wherever he is and then he is able to remove him state, himself from the state of ihram. And the evidence is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah فَإِنْ أُحْسِرْتُمْ فَمَا اسْتَيْسِرَ مِنِ الْحَدِي And if you are in the situation of being muhsir, this person that we are describing, then whatever you are able to give from a sacrificial animal. Sheikh Mansour says, فَإِذَا لَمْ يَجِدْ حَدِيًا If the person cannot find the sacrificial animal, فَإِنَّهُ يُصُومُ عَشَرَةَ أَيَّامِ Then he fasts ten days. ثُمَّ يَحِلْ And then he is freed from the state of his, his ihram. وَالْأَلَّةُ And the reason for this, أَنَّ الدَّمُ الْإِحْصَارُ دَمٌ وَاجِدْ أَنَّ الدَّمُ الْإِحْصَارُ دَمٌ وَاجِبْ That the sacrifice which is upon the one who is muhsir, the one who is prevented from entering into Mecca whilst being in the state of Haram, then this is a sacrifice, a dam, a penalty which is wajib, which is obligatory. لِأَجْلِ الْإِحْرَامِ For the state, for the sake of his Ihram. Meaning that he can't leave the Ihram until he makes the sacrifice. فَكَانَ لَهُ بَدْلٌ And because it's wajib, it has a badl, it has a replacement. So the one who cannot sacrifice an animal due to whatever reason, he has a replacement because it's wajib. Kadam tamattu' Like the situation of the one who it was obligatory upon him as in Hajj tamattu' that he had to sacrifice but he couldn't sacrifice, he couldn't find the animal then he had a replacement of fasting. Likewise this person, the muhsir, also has the replacement of fasting. فَيُقَاسُ um, alayhi Because qiyas is made between the two. وَيَنْتَقِلُ إِلَى صِيَامِ عَشْرَةِ أَيَّامِ So the muhsir, the one who is forbidden from entering to Mecca and he cannot find an animal to sacrifice, then he fasts 10 days. كَبَدِلْ حَدِّ التَّمَتَّعِ Like the one who was unable to sacrifice in the Hajj at tamattah وَلَيْسَ لَهُ أَنْ يَتَّحَلَّلْ إِلَّا بَعْدَ الصِّيَامِ And it's not permissible for this person to remove his state of ihram until he has done this fasting. كَمَا لَا يَتَّحَلَّلْ وَاجِدْ الْحَدِ إِلَّا بِنَحْرِهِ Like the one who is making Hajj to Matta' and he has the sacrificial animal, he cannot be removed from his state of ihram until he sacrifices that animal. The author, may Allah have mercy upon him, he says, وَيَجِبُ بِوَطْئٍ فِي فَرْجٍ فِي الْحَجِ بَدَنَا Now, the author, he says, and it's obligatory for the one who has the marital intercourse um, in Hajj that he has to pay the fidya of a badana, he has to pay a camel as a penalty. Sheikh Mansur says, في هذه الجملة أشار الماتن إلى قسم ثالث من أقسام المحذورات الإحرام In this sentence, the author has alluded to the third type of the um, محذورات of the إحرام the third type of penalty for falling into this violation of the إحرام uh, the third type of violation of the ihram, which is al fil hajj qabla tahallul awwal, is having sexual intercourse in hajj before the first tahallul. Wa anna fihi. The author has decided anna fihi fidyatan wa hiya badana. The author has decided that the fidya must take place, the penalty must take place, and it is a badana. It is a camel. فَإِنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ بَدْنَا And if the person cannot find the camel, فَإِنَّهُ يَصُومُ عَشْرَةَ أَيَّامِ Then the person fasts ten days. ثَلَاثَةً فِي الْحَجِّ Three in the hajj. وَسَبْعَةً إِذَا رَجَعَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِي And seven when he returns to his family. Or meaning when he finishes the rites of hajj. أَمَّا إِنْ كَانَ الْجِمَاءَ بَعْدَ التَّحَلَّلُ الْأَوَّلِ فَأَلَيْهِ دَمْ وَهِيَ شَاتْ However, if the person had made the first tahallul, he shaved his head and he had pelted the Jamarat al-Aqaba after, if he, after doing that fell into jama' fell into marital intercourse then what's upon him is that he has to pay the shat he has to sacrifice a sheep or a goat Wal and the reason for that أَنَّهُ istimta'a la يُفْسِدُ hajj that it is enjoyment through relationship which doesn't invalid the hajj فَلَمْ يُجِبْ الْبَدْنَ and therefore Badana, the camel, is not obligatory upon him because this took place after the second tahallul. If it took place before the first tahallul, then 
he has to pay the badna, he has to pay the sacrifice. If it took place after the second tahallul, then he has to pay the um, a sheep. And this is because it doesn't invalidate his hajj. Let me just recap there. We said that if the person, he has uh, the jima before the tahallul awwal, then he has to pay the badna, right? But if he makes the jima after the tahallul awwal, then he has to pay the sheep or the goat. Uh, Sheikh Mansour, uh, the Sheikh Al Hajjawi, Imam Al Hajjawi, he said, "Wafil Umrah and the person who has relationships in Umrah, he has to pay a shat, the sheep or the goat. Man jama' fil Umrati, Sheikh Mansour says, whoever has jama' in Umrah, whoever has relationships in Umrah, so what? And can la qabla tawaf, whether that's before tawaf or بعده و قبل سعي or after tawaf and before the سعي, فعليه شات. Then upon this person, he has to pay shat." Nasa ala dalika Imam Ahmed. Imam Ahmed specifically gave fatwa on this issue. Wa inna ma furriqa bayn al hajj wal umrah. And verily a diff distinction between hajj and umrah is made. Why? Li anna rutbat al umrah aqal min rutbat al hajj. Because the, the, the status and the level of umrah is less than the status and level of hajj. Fa khufifat al jinaya tu fiha. Therefore, the criminality of the violation is less than that which is in Hajj. وَقَوْلُهُ وَإِنْ طَاوَعَتْهُ زَوْجَتُهُ لَزِمَهَا If the wife was willingly a partner in that, meaning that she was not forced in that sexual relationship, then she also has to pay the fidya. الْمَرْعَةُ الْمُجَامِعَةُ بِنِسْبَةِ لِلْكَفَارَةِ لَا تَخْلُو مِنْ حَالَتَيْنِ Sheikh Mansour says that the woman in this situation of the forbidden relationship in Hajj, she is fall, she falls into one or two situations. Number one, and takuna mutawatan fa alayha kafara tun karajul. That she is willing, a willing partner, so she also has to pay a kafara like the man. And it falls upon her and it's realized for her that which is realized for the man from the violating of the Hajj, from the spoiling of the rights of the Hajj and the having to make it up and other matters pertaining to that and these have been mentioned secondly, a second situation that she is mukriha, that she is um, yani compelled to do it without wanting to then there is no kafara upon her as it is known from the conditions of the one who has to pay penalties for the mahdurat wahajjuha sahi and the hajj is valid inshallah we'll stop here and we'll leave the completion of these matters that we are speaking about the penalties of hajj for the next session inshallah because sheikh mansur he's about to start another section completing the issues pertaining to the violations of the state of Haram and we'll finish that inshallah next week before we move on to speaking in detail about the violations of hunting when you shouldn't be hunting or killing an animal when you shouldn't have killed an animal and all you think which was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala any mistakes and shortcomings from myself and shaitan I hope this was beneficial for us inshallah and heavy in our scale of good deeds if there's any questions on the matters that we have taken feel free if not may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you immensely وجزاكم الله خيرا